In this video, we're continuing section 4.2 on maximums and minimums. And we're going to do an example that involves maximizing revenue. So the problem says, suppose there's a linear relationship between price, which is P, and demand, which is X. At a price of $4, at a price of $4, the demand is 12. So when they charge $4 for this item, 12 people or consumers are going to buy it. Each 50 cent decrease in the price or half dollar decrease in the price results in a one unit increase in the demand. So when they decrease the price by 50 cents, uh, one more person will end up buying it. Okay, we actually did part of this example back in section 4.1. There we got this equation for price in terms of X, in terms of the demand. So I'm not going to re-derive that equation, but I will link the video where we got this equation uh, in the description. Okay, so what I want to do now is find the demand that gives me the largest revenue. This is a really common uh, problem that businesses think about. We're trying to maximize my revenue. So we want to maximize the revenue. That's always what we want to begin by identifying. Am I trying to maximize something or minimize? Largest means maximize. Right? We want to maximize our revenue. Okay, step two of a max min problem is, is to draw a picture. You know, for this problem, there isn't really a picture to draw. Well, actually, technically, the picture is something that we kind of drew back in section 4.1. Recall, that's kind of where we drew our axes, and, you know, we had drawn, like, our line using the, the information that was given to get a couple of points. Again, refer back to that previous video to, to see what was that picture, how did we use it to then get the equation of this line. Okay. Well, the next step of a max min problem is to write the objective equation. So the object objective equation is an equation for the thing I want to maximize or I want to minimize. In this case, that's revenue, which is R. So recall that revenue is price times demand. So price times the quantity that's sold, and that's demand. Okay, so using variables, R equals P times X. X is the variable for demand. Okay, so usually our objective equation is gonna be in terms of more than one variable on the other side. And we wanna get it in just in terms of one variable over here. And for that, we need the constraint. We need the constraint equation. So this is another equation that I set up based on information in the problem. Okay, so what I wanna do here is I wanna give you an opportunity to try this, see if you can identify, you know, based on the information in the problem, you know, what's my constraint equation? Is there some other equation I can write down based on the variables I have? And then once I got that, I'm going to use it to substitute in. So I get this in terms of one variable and then see if you can keep going and then try to get the max or get the min. Okay. So I'm going to have you pause the video for five minutes to try this. Pause it in four, three, two, one, pause it and try this for about five minutes. All right, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it and tried it for about five minutes. Let's talk about it. But the pause and try is especially important, I think, in this section. Um, these max min problems can be challenging. There's a lot of steps to them. They're often word problems that we got to convert to math, which can be challenging. So any opportunity you get you to practice this, try this on your own, is especially beneficial. So you really want to Try these as much as you can. Okay, so the other equation is actually given to me in the problem. So my constraint is P equals negative one half X plus 10. So I'm gonna take that and substitute it in where I got the P in my revenue. Okay, so I'm gonna substitute it in. So I got R equals P times X. And for the P, I'm gonna plug in this negative, ooh, negative one half X plus 10. Okay, so I like the fact that revenue is now in terms of one variable. So I'm going to simplify this. Let's distribute the x in. Distribute it in. That gives me negative one half x squared plus 10x. Negative one half x squared plus 10x. Okay, so just as a reality check here, let's just make sure that my quadratic, what's the leading coefficient? Well, it's this negative one half, this negative one half that we call that a, the leading coefficient, that is less than zero, it's negative. And that means we have a downward parabola, a downward parabola. 
Okay. So, okay, so my parabola is going to look something like this. It's downward facing. So at the, at the vertex, at the vertex, we will have a max. We will have a max. That's on a downward parabola. The vertex is the highest point. That's going to be my max. And that's good because in the problem, I do want to get a maximum. Okay, so this explanation here is absolutely essential because that will explain why do I have a max and not a min. That's an essential part of the problem. Okay, so how do I get the vertex? Okay, so there's a few ways of doing this, of getting that vertex. Uh, you know, you all may have seen like a vertex formula back at some point in an algebra class previously. In our class, I don't want to rely on the vertex formula. Instead, I want to do this thing by completing the square because that's just a method that you, it, you're going to, you might need at some point in your calculus class and it's helpful to know. So I want to continue practicing it. So when I complete the square, if there is a leading coefficient in front of the x squared, I first want to factor that out of the first two terms. So that negative one half, let's factor it out out of the first two terms. So that'll leave me with x squared first. Well, how do I factor it out of 10 x? What I do is I write what's currently there, which is plus 10 x. And then I divide it by what I just factored out, which is negative one half. And I could check that because if I distribute this negative one half back in, when I distribute it to the fraction, that negative one half will cancel with this negative one half on the denominator. So give me back the 10 x. Okay, so if I simplify this fraction that I got, I got 10 x divided by a fraction. That means I multiply it by the reciprocal, multiply it by negative two. Okay, so let's do that. I got r equals negative one half in front, parentheses x squared, and then multiplying these, I'll get minus 20 x. Now I'm gonna leave some space because now we're gonna do the whole thing. When we take this coefficient of the x, which is negative 20, I'll divide it by two to get negative 10. And then starting a new step, so I'll put an arrow, I square that number. So negative 10, that thing getting squared, uh, that's 100. Okay, and now I take this number and I'm going to add it and I'm going to subtract it both in the parentheses. So plus 100 goes first, then minus 100. And if I did this right, these first three terms in the parentheses should factor as a perfect square. Like I'll get x, I'll get some number and a perfect square. So, you know, we might think about what that number is that when I FOIL this out, it works out to these three terms. Um, but remember the shortcut for getting that number. That number that goes here should always be what I get when I divided that coefficient of x, that negative 20, by 2. So when I divided, I got negative 10. So that should be what goes here. And indeed, if you, if you FOIL this out, it does work out to these three terms I had up above. Okay. All right, so now I got that perfect square. Now I'm ready to distribute the negative one half. So that'll distribute to my perfect square. And I also distribute it to that negative 100. So doing that, I get r equals, let's see, negative one half, parentheses x minus 10 squared, times negative one half, times that negative 100. Okay. And simplifying, I get r equals negative one half, parentheses x minus 10 squared, multiplying negative one half and negative 100, I get plus 50. Cool, so I completed the square. We are ready to write down our vertex. So the x coordinate of my vertex is what I plug into the perfect square to make this part be zero, and that's 10. The y coordinate is, well, if I do plug in 10, what does this whole thing become? Well, I get zero plus 50, which is 50. So those are the coordinates of my vertex. So what did the problem exactly want? Like I got this vertex. In this case, I know it's a max because we said it was a downward parabola. So I wanted to find the demand that gives me that largest revenue, which means I'm, I'm demand was X. I'm trying to find the value of X. Okay, so once I got my vertex, I first want to identify what variable goes with each coordinate. Okay, so on the right hand side, well, the variable that I got here is still an x like I'm used to. So this 10 represents my x coordinate, but I don't have a y in this equation like I'm used to. Instead of y, what I have here is I have, I have r. So 50 represents the value of r. 
Okay, so part A was asking me for the demand. Asking me for the demand, and demand is X. Okay, and the value I see is here. The demand is 10. And there, I should include units. What is the demand? Well, it's the quantity that people will buy. So I will say just 10 items. 10 items, that is the demand. That's gonna give me that maximum, maximum revenue that I was talking about. All right. Part B, find the price that maximizes, oops, sorry, I missed an S here, that maximizes the revenue. Okay, so, well, how do I do this? There's a few ways, um, but one is, I know X and I'm looking for P, but we had an equation that involves P and X, so let's use that. So let's use that constraint. So we had P equals negative one half X plus 10. And now let me plug in our X value into this equation. So that'll give me P equals negative one half times X times the 10 plus that 10 at the end. Okay, so this is negative five plus 10, which is five. And what are the units of price? Well, it was dollars here, so $5. Okay, and then finally, part C says find the maximum revenue. Okay, so if I wanted to, now that I have price and I got the demand, well, remember revenue is price times demand. I could multiply those. And that would give me 50, but also I, I identified R already. R was here. So I can just use that fact. The maximum revenue, maximum revenue is 50. We had that earlier. And I should have units. The units of revenue in this case are dollars. And there we have it. There's our maximum revenue.